so again, we are in this series called The Fight of Your Life Reset, and I want to get right into it today. Um, again, the Bible says this, to fight the good fight of faith, right? Paul talking to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith, and so we t- said this, that there is a fight to faith, but it is a good fight, and the fight that we fight is not a fight that we're trying to get the victory. How many know that Jesus is already victorious? And his victory is our victory, praise God. So it's not for victory that we're fighting, but it's from victory. It's from a standpoint of already being victorious. The Bible says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Somebody say that. Say, I am always triumphant. I'm always victorious. I don't know about you, but I don't know whatever your favorite team is, but I like my team to win. I always want my team to win. Always. I, I, when it's my team, uh, you might be like, I feel sorry for, no, when it's my team, I don't feel sorry for the other team. I want my team to step on their neck. Like, um, not literally, not literally, but, you know, I mean, like, no breaks, you know what I mean? Let's go for it. Run it down their throat. I mean, stuff it in their face. I, let their kids cry, you know. Um, just, that's the type of victory that I like when it's my team. And so I'm on the winning team. I grew up in the Caribbean, and, and there's a um, gospel artist by the name of Lester Lewis that would sing a song, say, Jesus is the winner man, the winner. Some of y'all know it. Some of y'all grew up in the Caribbean. I see it. The rest of y'all, what is that? What is that? I said, the winner. The winner. The winner. Okay, yeah. Some of y'all been saved for quite some time. <laughs> some of y'all need some culture in you. Like, what is that? I don't know. Uh, but it, it didn't become so popular that it made it to Africa and all that stuff. Uh, short, quick story. My dad is actually the one that introduced him and, and helped um, expand him uh, and his ministry. And even uh, Donnie McClurkin took up some of his songs, I believe it was, you know. So something like that. That's a Donnie McClurkin song. Uh, no. That's Lester Lewis and Singing Rose. <laughs> Anyways, a l- little inside um, story. Praise the Lord. So, um, but, but we are victorious. And so we've talked about this, that the fight really, uh, the fight to faith is really a fight to keep you from fighting. Because yes. we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the Bible says, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, right? So bringing every thought into captivity. Let's, let's turn there real quick. Let's go to, um, where we find that? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it is. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And um, again, in John 16, 33, the Amplified, I'm going to paraphrase it, but Jesus said in this life, um, you will have tribulations, trials, temptations, frustrations. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, and I've deprived it of his power to harm you, and I've conquered it for you, right? Um, So we should have confidence in Christ. We should have confidence what Jesus has done for us. And and confidence and and bravery and courage doesn't doesn't mean that there isn't any opposition. It's... I mean, there's no such thing as courage without opposition. What do you have to be courageous about? You know what I mean? I mean, there's no, when I was a kid, there was, it took me no courage to step in the shallow side of the pool. Like once I could touch, it didn't take any courage. I I mean, there was no, there was no opposition. Once, once the water's like right here, I'm good. But when all my friends were out in the deep, and I knew that I was four foot something and, and the pool was 10 feet deep. And I'm like, I can't touch. That's where it took some confidence. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Amen. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, I'll start in verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, do we have anybody that walks in the flesh? Yeah. We do. Like, you got a body, right? So that's us. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Some of y'all are fighting the wrong fight. You know, when holidays come around, some of you fight the wrong fight. Like, why are you all up in our family? Though we walk in the flesh, 
We do not war according to the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to, to whether your family member isn't uh, of the same party affiliation than you are. Oh, traitor. <laughs> they don't have the same mindset as you. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our war. How many know we got some weapons? It would be a shame if, if, if we were placed on the front line with no weapons. You know what I mean? But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what? Oh, you got some mighty weapons. The weapons that you have, the weapons that you've been given, they are mighty in God. And there's a purpose for it. Why? For the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments, King James says, imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Look at this. Bringing into captivity, bring in, I'm sorry, bringing every thought. How many thoughts? Every thought. So is every thought important? Yes. It absolutely is. Right. How many thoughts have you had for the day? <laughs> right, a, a whole lot. Whether you realize it or not, you've had a whole lot of thoughts. And every thought is important. Bringing every thought into captivity to what? To the obedience of Christ. And so any thought that is not in line with Christ needs to be brought into captivity. And no, you're going to line up with, with what, what Jesus has done. You're going to line up with what the Bible says about this situation. You're going to line up. You, you must not allow. I mean, people will say, well, it's just, it's just thoughts. But those thoughts, in, in the book, The Fight of Your Life, we talked about three different levels. We talked about thoughts, imaginations, and strongholds. Some of you are like, what, what book is that? The book you're supposed to be reading. <laughs> thoughts imaginations and strongholds i'm not going to get into it right now maybe we'll get into it in another week but but thoughts that are dwelled upon dwelt dwelled upon dwelt upon thoughts that you that you dwell on <laughs> and have breakfast thoughts that you dwell on eventually become a part of your imagination and imagination that just kind of um you don't do much with will end up becoming a stronghold. Now, you, you know, I, I know some of you that have been raised in church, you hear stronghold, you think, you know, a demonic stronghold. Ha, that's a stronghold that must be broken. And, and uh, there might be some truth to that, but a stronghold uh, is not always necessarily that. A stronghold, there, you can also build positive strongholds in your life. A stronghold is, you know, if you think about it, it's a military term actually, where you can, you can, um, you know, they would build up these walls, so to speak, to keep the enemy out. And that would be a stronghold. And you can actually, with, through the same process of how a negative stronghold can come in, you know what I mean? Like where this is something that, is, that has just been a part of your life for so long, is the same way you can cause a positive stronghold to come in. Yeah. Yeah. Through your thoughts. Amen. Now, last night, we were at our campus um, that we're launching um, in, in, the, uh, in Winter Park. We were in Winter Park. And so I was teaching along some lines. And, and, and so it, it just seemed like a good place to go to today. So things have shifted a little bit. But you all still with me, right? Yeah. Amen. So um, we said this. Let me find it here. Last week we, we read this. We said, for the person who has an unrenewed mind, that individual will struggle and even argue with the word of God. That unrenewed mind, because again, we talked about how important it is to renew our minds with the word of God. The saving of your soul. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. That is not a one-time thing. That is not like, well, I'm saved, ain't I? There's some people that think that just because you got saved and just, be, just, just because you have the victory doesn't mean that there aren't things that you have to do. I mean, it would be great if everything was just like, I don't have to do anything. The Lord already did it all. He already did it all, but there's a receiving part that we have. There's the giving part of God, but there's also the receiving part of man. Are y'all following me today? 
And so in every believer, in every situation, there's some, there's some receiving that is necessary in our lives. Remember, we went to March 6 last week, and we talked about how Jesus, when he went back to his hometown, uh, they, didn't, they weren't able to receive from him. It said that he could not do any mighty work. Not that he wouldn't, but he could not do any mighty work because of their unbelief, because uh, they were offended at him. And what did Jesus do? He marveled, but then he said, you know what? The Bible says that he went in a circuit teaching and preaching, or actually it said he went about teaching and healing. In other words, teaching is a cure for unbelief. Yeah. So it did not stop Jesus from being anointed. Come on. It never stopped him from being the son of God. It never stopped him from being the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. But it stopped them from receiving what he had to give. And so the question becomes, what are we doing that is causing us to not receive things that rightfully and legally belong to us? Because these people, I'm not going to go back to it, but these people had heard about these miracles. And when Jesus showed up and they recognized him, they said, wait, this is Joseph's boy. That's Jojo and Mary's boy. Y'all kidding me? I mean, where'd he get such authority? But they believed the miracles that he did, but once they saw something that was contrary to their perspective... Then all of a sudden, the thoughts came like, what's he going to do? What can he do? And it hindered and affected their ability to receive. Uh, is this making sense? And so a lot of times we could say things like, I mean, for real, how are they going to do that? But you're doing it 24-7. Well, not really. I'm sorry. Not, not necessarily 24-7. But weekly, at least. At least weekly, we're missing out on things that belong to us because we're not taking control of our thoughts. Because things may not be packaged in a way that we think that they should. So again, um, the unrenewed mind will try to reason, but a mind that is renewed with the word will come into agreement with, with what God has said in his word. And this is something we said last week. There are a lot of followers of Christ that wish they were spiritual giants but they aren't willing to do what is necessary to renew their minds. I'll, I'll stop there uh, as far as reading. But can we see the importance of this? Again, this is not a message that we, you know, we're going to preach you happy and all these different things, but there's some adjustments that we have to make. Yes. Now, last night, um, we went to um, Mark chapter 5. Um, Let's go there real quick. Mark chapter 5. I only hear my page turning. I guess all y'all using electric Bibles. You realize this all helps with the, I mean, some of y'all like, I'm going to wait till it gets on the screen. Mark chapter 5. Or maybe, I'm sorry, maybe you were writing down your notes first so you can go back to, to review it. But these are things that are important. Too often what has happened is our society is just... Um, the, the, our current culture has gotten us to a place of where we're just lazy. Yeah. And we want to talk about everybody in this generation that is just so entitled. When we have a whole bunch of Christians that just have this entitlement mentality. Yeah. And you are entitled to the promises of God. You are entitled to all that God has for you. But I'm just saying that there's a responsibility that falls on us. The renewing of the mind, that responsibility is not up to God, but it's up to us. And too often, we're just finding people that just feel entitled. Well, God, do what you do best. <laughs> Jesus. And religion has had you bound. And you can go to a church like this that is teaching you the word of God. Great teaching. Oh, thank God for the teaching. My pastor gives me. And that's good. Thank God you have the word of God that's coming forth on a weekly basis in your life. But until you do something with it for yourself, it's not enough for it to just be information or for you to just mentally agree with what's being said. But come on, you got to recognize the plans of the enemy that is trying to hinder you from taking this word and making it a reality in your life. 
Capture every thought that is not in obedience to Jesus. Every thought is necessary. And too many of us are just on this loop. This idle thinking, this, this uh, when I say loop, you know what I mean? Like um, back in the days we had those, well, we, we have vinyl records now. Um, you know, they're making a, a comeback for some people. Um, but, you know, those vinyl records, I'm going to date some of you, but how many remember you used to put a, probably put a dime on top of it just to give it a little extra weight because um, you needed that needle to, I uh, see some of y'all like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. <laughs> Groovy. Um, sorry. <laughs> but um, because what would happen is like uh, sometimes that needle would just skip a loop and you would just be hearing the same thing over and over and over. Or, you know, those of you that grew up with CDs. You know, when there was a scratch, it would, eh, 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 you know, you'd, you'd catch a loop, so to speak. And, and a lot of times, that's what's happening. You know, the Bible talks about, um, uh, and this is God speaking in Psalms, it says, oh, how I hate vain thoughts. Vain thoughts. These vain thoughts are unproductive thoughts. Thoughts that you just allow to just loop. And a lot of times, these unproductive thoughts that we're allowing to stay cause us to get to this place where we just allow our imaginations to go in this area, and then it becomes a stronghold. So thoughts that came to you, and sometimes it's because of uh, the way that we were raised, maybe certain words that you heard growing up, maybe someone saying that you're never going to be good enough, or someone telling you how bad of a boy you are such a bad boy you'll never you know a bad girl or, or all these different things and these words were spoken to you and as a result you cause it causes you to have this thinking and and as a result you play these thoughts over and over again in your imagination and so now it becomes a stronghold and some of you might even be married and having issues because of stuff in your past because things that you haven't dealt with so now as soon as your spouse even does something that is close, y'all with me, close to what you dealt with right away, <sighs> right? Because it became such a part of your imagination that it became a stronghold in your life, which affects your behavior. So in Mark chapter 5, we find um, this passage where it talks about the woman with the issue of blood. Well, prior to this, um, the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, uh, came to Jesus, and his, his daughter was sick. And so he said, if you come, pray for my daughter, she'll be made well. And so Jesus is coming. Jesus located Jairus' point of contact. So Jairus' faith was in the fact that if Jesus would come, Lord, if you'll come and you pray for my daughter, she'll be made well, right? And so Jesus said, bet, I'm coming. Well, on their way to Jairus' house, this woman comes and she presses through the crowd. Just, I mean, there's a whole crowd of people around Jesus. People are just hoping to just touch him. You know what I mean? And, and they, they heard about him. And so there's this press and all of a sudden this woman is just rudely moving people out the way and, and reaching and she goes and she all she wanted to do was touch the hem of his garment just to end and she touched it and Jesus stopped and he said there's a different touch that happened he immediately knew in himself that power, somebody say power that power was, was, was released, that power came out of him, virtue came out of him, and he said, who touched my clothes? But I want to pick this up um, before this because, again, there's this woman who has issues. Anybody here has some issues? Yeah, we all do. So don't just look at your neighbor. Don't just think, I wish so-and-so was here today because they got issues. No, you all have issues. We all have issues. And so this woman with a, her issue was an issue of blood. Your issue might not be that. Your issue might be something, uh, some other ailment that the enemy has tried to place on your body. Your issue might be um, something that has happened in the past that has tried to get you locked into this way of thinking. Yeah. Your issue might be uh, just that, you know, you're lazy. Yeah. Your issue might be that you just grew up in church 
And you never really allow these things to become real to you. So this is just religious for you. Your issue might be that you've allowed the world to dictate how you think. And so now you've become agnostic or you become just this way of just, well, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, sure there's a higher power. I believe there's a higher power, but, but I'm, I mean, I'm just not sure if this is, you know, all this different stuff. Your issue is that you've just been so conformed to church, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. I, I grew up in church, so excuse me, but I just don't like religion. It's about a relationship that we should be having with him. It's about the kingdom that should be expanding. It's about about God in us. I mean, Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. I mean, so so please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that there's, uh, you got to excuse me. I've just seen too many people grow up in church and their lives look no different. Because it didn't say if any man be in church, he's a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And we have to allow, as Pastor Mark Hankins says it, you have to allow God to introduce you to your new self because you're such a different person in Christ Jesus. And so as he introduces you to your new self, now you have to go through this mind renewal process that is not something that ever ends. But you've got to continue, continue to renew your mind with God's word. So here it is, this woman, she has this issue of blood. For how long was it? Just making sure. Thank you, Pastor Bill, for paying attention. Anybody else? How long was it, this flow of blood? Twelve years. Twelve years. Twelve years. How long? Twelve years. Some of you got something going on for the last six weeks, and you, I just, oh, I can't. I just can't. 12 years she had this issue. And she was not one of those that just tried to ignore the issue, but she tried to do something about it. Because here's the next verse. It says that she had suffered many things from many physicians. In other words, she is actually doing something about it. She's, she's throwing wisdom at it. She's going to the physician. She's going to the doctors. She ain't one of these super religious ones that just say, well, bless God, I'm not, you know, oh, I heard the word of God. No, I mean, get some wisdom about it. It's okay to go to, let me free, let me, let me free you up. We teach faith here. We believe in divine healing. We've seen people divinely healed, but it is okay to get a checkup. They are in the healing business as well. Now, here's where you draw the line. Whose report will you believe? Now, despite, they're just doing their job to tell you how it is, but my God has told me exactly how it is. And so now I just choose to believe his report, but I will get some wisdom about something if I have to. So she suffered many things. Now, here's the thing. She went to the doctors, and she spent all that she had 12 years. She spent all that she had. Not like she held back some. All that she had. That's like emptying out your 401k, your IRA, selling your home. You, know, you didn't just take a second one or a third mortgage. You sold it all. You, she has nothing left. She spent all, she, tr- she threw money at the problem. I don't know how many of us have done that before where we've just thrown money at the problem. We've thrown, we've thrown our natural and others. We're doing things just in the flesh. But none of it helped. Rather, she grew worse. Are y'all with me? It says this. It says, and when she heard about Jesus, thank God. When she heard about how many of you remember where, where, you were, where you were when you heard about Jesus? I mean, not just you heard the name, but when you heard about the love that he has for you, when you heard when you, I mean, I'm talking about even, even to this day as we're saved, when I hear about Jesus and I see another dimension of his love, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if I may only touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Amplified says, that she kept on saying. So this is a process of time. So she heard something, and now she has to make the choice to picture and visualize 
and get this into her imagination. Y'all with me? Your imagination is not something that was just given to kids. Just so they can be like Alice in Wonderland or what's, you know, one of these other things. Who was the other one? Peter Pan. But imagination is something for us yes. to use. Yes. It's powerful. Yes. Remember the Tower of Babel where God had to stop? They, they were getting ready to build a, a tower that goes to God, that was going to go to the throne of God. And I remember as a kid thinking like, well, but they would have suffocated in, in, in space. You know, but honestly, this is how powerful our imagination is that had God not done something about it, they would have figured out a way of how to get there. So the Bible says God had to confuse them and give them different languages and all that because what they imagined to do, because remember, we were created in an image and likeness of God. So God thinks. God imagines. And within that imagination, there's creative process that is there. So you business owners that sometimes you have an issue and you're right away trying to throw money at it or trying to throw wisdom at it, and in other words, just natural stuff, it would help you. If you are a child of God, it would help you, especially if you're filled with the Spirit of God, it would help you to just go ahead and sit back and just, all right, Holy Ghost, help me. I'm going to imagine some stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to picture what it looks like. I'm going to picture what it looks like to be out of the red. I'm going to picture what it looks like to be able to launch this other... This other um, this other area. I'm going to picture what it looks like for, for, for me to have more employees. I'm going to picture what it looks like for me to not just be struggling and wondering how am I going to pay my employees and all. Use your imagination. Bring every thought into captivity that is not in obedience with Christ. For 12 years she had this. She heard about Jesus. Don't you think the thought could have came in like, girl, you tried everything. Why are you going to waste your time? You know, you step out this house, they could stone you. Think about the thoughts of fear. Think about the opposition that would come to her. Think about, think about all that she is, uh, even though she's thinking, I can, I can imagine, I can, I can do this, yeah. I mean, if I just touched the hem of his garment. And, and she kept on saying, why? Because the things that you talk about will eventually get into your, uh, you'll think about it. You do. Because words paint a picture, right? I mean, I, I know we, you know, some of, I remember um, when Kizzy was younger, she would watch this show called Word World. I think that's what it was, Word World. And so um, they would have certain words and it would be spelled out. But, you know, in our lives, that's not how it is. If I say red truck, you don't see the letters R-E-D-T-R-U-C-K. You actually picture a red truck. Right? And so words are containers and words paint images. And this is why we got to pay attention to what we say. So this woman, what she was doing was she was actually schooling herself into faith. Because notice when she touched her, uh, we're not going to go there, but, but if you read on, Jesus said this. He said, um, after she came and explained all that, that happened, um, she, she came and, and she was, she was <laughs> terrified, but she explained all that happened. She told Jesus her whole life. Jesus didn't say this. He didn't say, girl, you like that? I put that power right in that place where you were going to touch. I knew you was coming, and, and as soon as you touch it, zap. You like that? No, he said, daughter, your faith made you well your faith daughter your faith if her faith could do that I wonder what your faith could do fight the good fight of faith and she did fight that fight the opposition the biggest opposition was not the crowd that she would meet the biggest opposition was what was going on in her mind for 12 years things got worse. For 12 years, it seemed like nothing was working. For 12 years, she's struggling financially because she spent all that she had. Thank God, somehow she still had some kind of relationship, somebody that loved her enough to tell her about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, despite her issue that she had for 12 years, all of a sudden, there's some hope. Huh. 
man, I wonder what would happen. So you, you mean to tell me, like, dude down the road, he got healed? You, you had a cousin in that other town, and they had what? I wonder what would happen. Man, it sure would be not. You know what? I just think if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made. He don't have to talk to me. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. If I could just touch, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. If, if, if I could just, man, if I could get to him, if I could just touch. I mean, what is she doing? She is, she's getting in her imagination. She's picturing it. All I got to do is just get to his, get to the hem. I don't have to tackle him. If, all I have to do is just get to the hem. If I could just touch. She kept on saying, that's what the Amplified said. She kept on saying. It's almost like you're psyching yourself up. You know what I mean? Like Pastor Bill, before he met Valencia, like, I'm going to just, if I could just talk to her, I'm going to just, I'm going to just talk to her. I'm going to just, man, man, she looked good. She'd probably make a mean mac and cheese too. I mean, man. Think of what Thanksgivings will be like for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Here's Bill. Bill Simmons talking to himself. If I could just, man, ooh, if I could just talk to her. If I can just get her to, to hear me out for a little bit. If I could just take her out on a date. Ooh, I'm going to have her locked. I don't know how long it took. How long it took? It wasn't like that. Just one shot. Just one. See, it's just one shot. <laughs> He said, it just took me one touch. <laughs> but this woman, she's just saying, what is she doing? She is actually meditating, believe it or not. She's doing something that is scriptural because she hears about Jesus. And she is, um, now she didn't have the word of God, but she heard, in one sense you could say she heard the gospel, she heard the good news about this Savior, this Messiah, this prophet, this man, whatever it is that she heard, but she heard that he's a healer. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But for 12 years she had this issue. 12 years. And she had a deep desire to be healed. We know that. But a lot of times... We allow our strongest desires to affect our deepest desires. What do I mean by that? Well, she had to fellowship with her deepest desire. She had to, she had to, obviously she heard about it, she kept saying, oh, if I could just, what is she doing? She's fellowshipping with this deepest desire. I'll be made well. I'll be made well. There's hope. I'll be made well. I'll, I'll, I mean, this thing is going to be dealt with. Yeah, I, I mean, course in the midst of it she's probably thinking because the enemy would try to lie to you past failures would try to talk to you and and she's like you know man it's this is tough this is I mean I've, I've tried this what 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 if this is just like gonna be like another one of those times and just another disappointment you know that disappointment will talk to you when you've been let down over and over again now because of your thoughts and you've imagined it, now it become a stronghold, so now every, it will hinder you from taking another step. So you failed in that business, um, that business opportunity before, and so now you're scared to start, to, to uh, step out in this area. You failed in that last relationship, that last friendship you had, and so now you're scared to open up. You failed at that last church, you were hurt in that last church, so now you're, you're, you're still a little timid. And there are people that for the last 20 years of their life have this stronghold and they won't let it up. Abuse, verbal, mental, emotional, physical, sexual. These things don't have to be what dictates you for the rest of your life. Now you have a choice. You can either be a victim or you can be a victor. You cannot be both. The choice is yours. You can be a victim or you can be a victor, but you cannot be both. 
She could have chosen to stay a victim for the last, I mean, uh, for another 12 years. But she chose to be a victor. She aligned her thoughts. She kept saying, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. But again, many Christians, many Christians, many followers of Jesus would love to be spiritual giants, but they're not willing to do what is necessary to renew their minds with the word of God. You have to capture every thought. How many thoughts do you think a day? It's a lot. So one thing that helps you with your thinking is the words that you say. So you should create a habit of saying certain things. When you catch some of those thoughts, strain, bring it back. Don't try to outthink it. Bring it back with your words. Your words are powerful. Even scientifically, they tell you your body will respond to your words. If you're constantly saying, I'm tired, your body is going to respond. It doesn't know. Your body doesn't even know the difference between a fake laugh and a real laugh. I just feel so sad. Start laughing. Oh, that's just so silly. Then stay depressed. You just can't choose both. Victim or victor, which one you want to be? Well, here's the sad part about this. While I'm sharing this and teaching this, now let me say this. There is hope for every single one of us. But some of you have allowed this to stick around for so long that you just choose. Like this is... No, this is just how it's going to be. You know why? Because you like the pity. You like playing victim. And hey, will you still make it to heaven? You probably might, but it's going to be rough on the way. It's going to be rough. So if you like it, then say you like it. Stop blaming things on God. Stop asking people to pray for you. If you like it so much, I hate to come to you kind of real like this, but if you like it so much, if you like it so much, then stick with it. Just, we don't want to hear you complaining about it. Because the pity is not helping any of us. So again, the choice is yours. Victim or victor, what do you choose? I wish, I don't know if that, I'm ending, but I'm like, is that an encouraging place to end it? Is that good? Y'all all right? We good? Come on, somebody say this. Say, I am a victor. I am not a victim. Christ lives in me. The victor himself lives in me. I am victorious in Christ. I am triumphant in Christ. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm a child of God. I'm full of life. I'm full of victory. I'm full of health. I'm full of wealth. I am a happy pappy in the name of Jesus. Somebody, somebody give God some praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, I pray for every one of us here. The sound of my voice. Father, we'll be so equipped so encouraged to truly get into the word, to truly live this way, to live the way of the victor and no longer living as a victim. That those things that have been our deepest desires, that we'll spend time with those things, that we'll focus, we'll meditate, we'll write those things down and we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time just, just visualizing it and speaking about it and talking about it, making it a part of our reality. We honor you. We thank you for it today. In the mighty name of Jesus.